Hi, this is Gadi Elkamaselli, Film News. We're here with the director, David Thorpe, of Do I Sound Gay? And David, this is a, it's such a personal film. I mean, you're, you're throwing yourself out there. You're throwing your voice out there. Um, what made you want to just tackle it now? Let's, let's throw it out there. I wanted to tackle it because of my own personal anxiety about sounding gay, and I knew that that was related to anxiety about being gay. But I think that what really pushed me through such an enormous project of making a feature documentary was meeting other people who also had anxiety about their voices. Um, I met this young guy really quite at the beginning of the filming who is in the movie and says, you know, I hate sounding gay, I wish I didn't sound gay, I couldn't get a boyfriend, I couldn't get a job because of my voice. And that was really compelling and I, you know, I, I couldn't, I thought this needs to be explored and explained. And, uh, you know, similarly, when I interviewed David Sedaris, he, he talked about his own kind of, kind of remaining kind of self-consciousness about, uh, about his voice. And, you know, he's incredibly successful and a role model for a lot of people. And so it was those kind of encounters that made me uh, keep going and make, finish the documentary. What made you pick up the camera? I mean, you've, you've written before this, mm -hmm. and, and you know, you easily could have done it that way, yeah. but what made you pick up the camera? I've secretly dreamed of being a filmmaker, really, <laughs> since I was a kid, uh, and this was an opportunity that was um, just super, just kind of like took, took me over and was totally compelling. And I mean, I, I was a journalist, I was a storyteller before, you know, as, loosely defined, um, but uh, I think it was a combination of that uh, always wanting, wanting, I mean, who doesn't want to make films? Yeah. Are no, there people exactly. who don't want to make films? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm curious then, because you, you had David Sedaris, you've got yeah. people like Dan Savage, who's yeah. a dynamic figure. Um, when you got to sit with those, because they're also writers, and they mm -hmm. um, have your same sensibilities, was it fun to see how open they were about this subject and about how it's maybe not, you know, for David, it's a personal affection, maybe, you know, Dan as well, but what was it like talking with them? It was amazing talking to David Sedaris and Dan Savage <laughs> and George Takei and, uh, and uh, Margaret Cho, Tim Gunn, Don Lemon. I mean, I, I wanted to spend, you know, I wanted to move in to Dan Savage's house <laughs> with him uh, because he just had so much wisdom and he was so much fun. and. They really were the kind of um, mentors or, I mean, almost like uncles and aunts that I felt like I needed to um, sort of help me understand what was going on, both from in my life and, and with the gay voice as a subject matter. So it really was one of those things where I was kind of sitting at the feet of my elders trying to figure out what was going on. You know, I, they might not want to be defined as elders. <laughs> I don't actually know if they are... Older than me, but <laughs> metaphorically speaking. Um, they've both spoken in Dallas recently, even. Oh, they have? Yeah, both uh, Dan and David. Um, what's it like being able to bring it to a southern city that has liberal sensibilities, though, that is a community that's open to you know mm. this film and, and what this film is trying to show? Well, I grew up in the South. I grew up in South Carolina, which you know I talk about in the film. So it means a tremendous amount to be in the South with the film. I'm also going to Nashville. I'm also going to Winston-Salem. And, you know, they're so, sort of liberal enclaves, but the South is the South. And, uh, you know, I want the, the film's message and the topic to go everywhere, but, but uh, it is especially important that it's a way in to talking about homophobia in places where maybe homophobia is still more prevalent. Did uh, anyone say no? To being a part of the project? A lot of people said no to being part of the project. Uh, uh, I don't want to say who, yeah. uh, and I don't know why, if it was that I was a first-time filmmaker or if it wasn't of interest. Um, sometimes I got the sense that it was the topic, um, but you know, I'm really glad that the people who said yes said yes. Is it interesting because, I mean, you are kind of, this is, it's an old subject, but it's something not everyone talks about. Mm -hmm. You're opening that door. You're really opening that conversation. The responsibility behind that, are you excited about that? I did feel responsibility uh, to try to get it right. Um, and, and I am excited to sort of be the messenger on the topic. 
Um, I don't know why it had sort of never been addressed, you know, head on before, um, but the fact that it hadn't was also a big um, spur for me. Like, this, somebody needs to address this. Um, there, there's probably a reason that it should be addressed. You know, I, I threw you on a, on the spot a little bit on the red carpet when I brought up Howard and Dan and was like, oh, right. "Can you have the same successes yeah. as how to survive?" But yeah. having them behind you, yeah. what does that say? Uh, it was incredible to have uh, Howard Gertler, who produced How to Survive a Plague, uh, as my producer. I mean, he really taught me everything I didn't know as a first-time filmmaker. Um, and then Dan Kogan and Jenny Raskin and Impact Partners, who were also involved in Plague, and they also, uh, Impact Partners was involved in The Cove and Queen of Versailles, um, and uh, Helen Back Again, and, and uh, Free Held, and you know, so many amazing documentaries. So um, I was so happy to work with them um, and be challenged by them, and they really took me under their wing. Both of them have had their films at DIFF as well. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, what, what was it like hearing from DIFF, and, and what are your feelings now that you've had a screening here? I was thrilled to, to be invited to play in Dallas. I was absolutely thrilled, and uh, I've had a great time. How was the screening? How were, the, were the questions good? Did you enjoy the, the responses? The questions were great at the screening, actually. Um, there is some pornography in the movie, like very short clips. Uh, because I, it's important to talk about um, how gay men kind of fetishize a super masculine voice, and pornography is kind of the proof. Um, so the short, the, sh the the clips are short, and you don't see anything really. But uh, you know, there was one guy who was clearly offended that those were in there, and I, I was glad he brought it up. And I thought we had, it, it gave me a chance to um, explain why why that was in the film. You know, wow. so. Uh, you've been able to travel with the film. I mean, you were at uh, BFI in London with mm -hmm. the film. Uh, you're obviously at TIFF. Mm -hmm. um, where are you hoping this goes from there? And, and how many more places? I mean, obviously Nashville, but I mean, obviously you'd like this to be seen by everyone. First of all, can I say you really have done your homework? I, you know more about this film than I think anybody has interviewed me, so I really well, thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. Well, uh, I've been really happy at its progress so far on the festival circuit. It played in Toronto and at Doc NYC and at British Film Institute. Um, you know, obviously, I want the film to go as far and wide as it can. Um, I'm I'm less concerned about you know uh, winning awards than than making a national conversation happen um, uh, in the mainstream. And uh, that's, that's what I really hope, is that it's, um, it addresses homophobia in a way that all of the United States can talk about. Well, we're glad that you brought that conversation here. And thanks so much. We uh, thank you for coming. Thank My you pleasure. very much. Great to meet you. Yeah. Thanks.